When uh, President Trump blew his top and uh, named China a currency manipulator, uh, for whatever reason, we don't know, uh, but probably because the dollar CNY moved above seven, uh, it continued to weaken uh, in the weeks afterwards. And now it's kind of round trip back actually below where it was uh, before, the, uh, before the designation. So I'll leave it to you to interpret you know, how important this designation is. I mean, we think this is almost completely politics in the last five months, has very little to do with fundamentals or even the markets. So it's just, a, it's just an excuse uh, for a market that wanted to buy the RMB anyway. Uh, I would uh, suggest that uh, whatever claims of scientific val validity uh, that Treasury was trying to cook up uh, for this uh, semi-annual report, uh, that's almost completely gone by now because the designation of China as a currency manipulator uh, was almost laughable uh, in its criteria. Cliff, there's some really interesting um, comments here in your thematic on supply chain shifting in and out of China as well. You use the acronym MNCs, talking about those multinational corporations. I'm really fascinated about what you've got to say here. Share it with our viewers and about concerns about supply chain shifting. Sure. I mean, I think uh, major companies around the world obviously have been spending a lot of time thinking about what the Trump trade wars mean for the long run and what it should mean for their supply chains. You know, our basic thesis is that even after phase one is signed, there's still going to be a lot of trade uncertainty out there. You know, I think earlier on you guys pointed out that we're still at a higher level of tariffs, uh, U.S. versus China, uh, than we were on the uh, 31st of July. And we think that you know, there are other areas in which uh, we may see trade tensions, including primarily with Europe, maybe in autos, you know, and actually maybe with Taiwan. The Trump administration lately has been expressing some unhappiness with the fact that Taiwan's trade surplus uh, with the U.S. has been rising because of the reshoring, again, as you mentioned earlier, of uh, trade activity to China. So this game hasn't, um, hasn't ended in our view. So if you're a large multinational in the world, you know, and if you recognize the world has changed in terms of trade, you've got to make some adjustments. And what we said in our piece is that this is basically about getting some flexibility out of China. You're not going to leave China. China is huge. You cannot leave China because it's too important a part of future growth. But you can make some hedges. And you might make some hedges, for example, by moving a line of production or a major product out of China, particularly if you were in China on the last stage of the, of the journey to the United States market. Now, that type of movement is going to be, we think, an order of magnitude bigger than what we saw last year. So what we saw last year was sort of small and medium-sized exporters from China, you know, moving to Vietnam, moving to Mexico, moving to Taiwan, and, you know, and moving maybe a few billion dollars uh, to each of those countries. I think, you know, if a major multinational moves out of China, we're, you know, we're looking at 100 suppliers for that uh, multinational. So, you know, if we had five multinationals move for the whole year this year, that's 500 companies. So we think this, this, this could be, you know, quite an interesting and a large scale process, not a small process. Hi, I'm Giovanna Bersacci and thank you for watching. You can check out more of our videos by clicking on the boxes on the screen. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more from CNBC International. Thank you for watching.